Was Jose de San Martin the hero Latin America deserved, but not the one it needed? Let's find out. Jose Francisco de San Martin y Matoras was born February 25th, 1778, in the Spanish Viceroyalty of Rio de la Plata, in what is current day Argentina. Since he was born in the Spanish colonies rather than in Spain, he was classified as a Creole in the regional hierarchy, where priority was given to peninsulares, Spanish colonists who had been born in European Spain. However, soon after San Martin was born, his family moved back to Spain, where he eventually joined the military, participating as a cadet in the Murcian Infantry Unit. The time spent with the Spanish military was crucial to the development of his military tactics and political philosophies. Having been part of the Spanish military, he was able to learn their tactics, something which he would later use against them in campaigns to liberate several South American Spanish colonies, as well as gaining somewhat of an affinity for monarchical systems of rule, where a king and or queen oversaw government administration. He fought with the Spanish army from the 1790s until the Peninsular War against Napoleon's French Empire, the war which eventually saw the capture of Spain. Having seen his country fall at the hands of the French, San Martin soon resigned from the Spanish military, shortly after moving to the United Kingdom. It was during this time in the UK that he met several Spanish-American revolutionaries who planned on traveling back to the South American colonies so that they could help declare independence from Spain, which had essentially become a French puppet state following the Peninsular War. This was the moment when San Martin shifted from being a determined royalist instead becoming an Argentine patriot who would serve under the first triumvirate, which governed the independent faction of Rio de la Plata at the time, appointing him to be a lieutenant colonel of the cavalry. Government officials in the Rio de la Plata capital of Buenos Aires hoped that he could improve their sorely lacking cavalry units, which could not compete with the superior Spanish cavalry tactics they were facing. Thus, he began to organize the regiment of mounted grenadiers alongside fellow revolutionaries Alvear and Zapiola. All the while, he was also tasked with protecting the entire capital city, since the Argentine government had insufficient military commanders to divide up the work. But San Martin did have some other ideas. When leaders of the first triumvirate caused a scandal by preventing opposition from voting, San Martin threw a military coup, taking over the capital and giving power to the second triumvirate, which was led by revolutionaries Juan José Paso, Nicolás Rodríguez Peña, and Antonio Álvarez Jonte, who immediately promoted him to the position of colonel. Many of the previous internal threats in Buenos Aires had been eliminated following this coup. However, there was a still significant external threat, since just across the La Plata River laid the royalist stronghold of Montevideo, the current day capital of Uruguay. Therefore, San Martin was dispatched to take care of the royalists in the Battle of San Lorenzo on the border with the Uruguayan region. Although, he was injured in the battle and it did not result in a decisive victory. The royalist force in Uruguay later had to be subdued by Admiral Brown in the Second Banda Oriental campaign. Soon after, he was dispatched to the Northern Army in Upper Peru, which is current-day Bolivia. Although, it was just a short assignment in which he reorganized their forces. Neither this nor Montevideo were what he was famous for. In reality, his performance during these two campaigns was relatively underwhelming. What really brought him to be a South American liberator 
was his next plan to take Upper Peru. Rather than remaining in a stalemate, he saw the long-term opportunity to open up another front and significantly weaken the Spanish by going through Chile and the Andes, a high-risk, high-reward option, which would only work if the Spanish had no idea it was going to take place. Therefore, San Martin was appointed as the governor in the border province of Cuyo in 1816 in order to engage the lengthy preparation process. Also promising freedom and riches to the mulatto and black populations of the region in order to gain more popularity and have them on his side, even allowing Spanish refugees to participate in the invasion of Chile. It was a monumental task which required a tremendous amount of time and effort from San Martin and his co-commander Bernardo O'Higgins. February 1817 saw the Argentine invasion of the Chilean capital of Santiago with a decisive defeat for Spanish forces. It was the largest military force to ever cross the Andes, something unseen up until that point, with six contingents each taking a different path to Santiago so that they wouldn't slow each other down. And if any single contingent encountered a Spanish force, it wouldn't be the end of the entire military campaign. After a month-long trek through the mountains, San Martin made it to Spanish-held Chile, with less than half of the army surviving the voyage. However, the Chilean War of Independence was ultimately successful, with the Chilean state formed as of 1818 with the victory in Maipu, and allowed for the second phase of the Peruvian conquest to begin by sea. This second phase permitted the purchase of seven warships and 18 transports for a landing 100 miles from the Peruvian capital, to intensify pressure and resolve the takeover through negotiations with the local upper classes who feared revolt from below. The situation led to a Spanish tactical retreat in June of 1821. Despite success on the Peruvian front, and a new cooperation with President of Gran Colombia, Simón Bolívar, infighting also presented itself as a significant issue to the governance of newly claimed territory. There was an ideological conflict between the northern republicanism proposed by Simón Bolívar and southern monarchism proposed by San Martín, posing significant tensions on their cooperation in Peru, since he was still affiliated with some political philosophies from his early days with the Spanish Empire, even sending a secret envoy to Europe in order to find a suitable Peruvian monarch. Although, rebellion took place since the newly independent South American nations hoped to escape both monarchy and European rule, so San Martin's proposal of a European king didn't fare so well. The divide is still seen in Venezuelan and Argentine historiography. Argentine historians assert that San Martin's request for military assistance from Bolivar was rebuffed in the conflict, and that the force from La Plata withdrew as a result, whereas Venezuelan historians assert that San Martin's main desire was an Argentine conquest of the previously Venezuelan-held territory of Guayaquil and into Peru. But what isn't disputed is that San Martin later left the conference, letting Bolivar take the glory, and Bolivar soon became El Libertador. San Martin later retired altogether, from South American politics, and moved to France, where he lived for several more years, unknown for his contribution to Argentine, Chilean, and Peruvian independence, overshadowed by other leaders like Bolivar. San Martin ended up being an excellent military leader for the fledgling South American nations, newly independent from Spain. 
However, his outdated political ideologies meant that he didn't fit in with many of the revolutionaries, and was ultimately surpassed by those with Republican ideologies. Latin America needed someone like Simon Bolivar to institute democratic systems independent of European influence. But this doesn't mean that San Martin's contributions as a libertador should be forgotten. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing below, and we also included in the description some further readings so you can check out more about this topic. Hope you have a great day. Bye!